So what do you do when you're done with Path of Exile for the League? For me personally, I always tend to take a break and play some other games, be it single player titles that I've been meaning to try, a new MMO release, or just something that I've played before and want to go back to. And I know it's getting to be that time of a league where a lot of people are also looking for something else to play. Personally, I think taking breaks from a game you love is super healthy. If you're not having fun with a game, you should be playing something else. And even if you love the game and you're having fun, very often taking a break can help you appreciate it even more. In fact, taking breaks from PoE is something Chris Wilson himself has advocated for. And so today, I'm going to give three recommendations for action RPGs that people still play. The games I'm recommending are going to be primarily older, and things with some multiplayer content and or community content. Then after that, I'll have kind of an unranked bonus section with other titles that I think are new, different, or in some way interesting. So to start off the list, the number three ARPG that people still play, released in 2006, is Titan Quest. If you're playing on a modern machine, I do recommend getting the Anniversary Edition, which was released in 2016, remastering the game for modern systems and bringing some quality of life upgrades. Now, Titan Quest isn't actually a game I have any experience with, which is somewhat shameful to admit as someone who's played thousands, if not tens of thousands of hours of ARPGs. That said, I have heard good things. And I know Titan Quest is an iconic game which has inspired many other more modern titles. It's extremely well reviewed on Steam at 91% positive. After looking through a few guides, recommendations, and should you play Titan Quest in 2020 or 2022, I found a few points of similarity. One of the ongoing themes is people really like the class selection in Titan Quest. And while it does have very fun multiplayer, it can be a little bit janky at times, especially when it comes to controls and potential issues for desync. Though people said most of their complaints about the game can easily be addressed or fixed by mods that are available in the Steam Workshop. Most often, I heard Titan Quest praised for its gameplay. So if you want something to get into, grind out some rares, fight some cool stuff, and take your class from someone who's struggling against one enemy to a god-slaying badass, Titan Quest may be the game for you. It's available for $20 on Steam, Epic, and Good Old Games. Steam is the easiest due to the mod support and Steam Workshop, but if you're watching this video when it airs, the game should still be on sale on GOG for $5. So if you want to pick it up for really cheap, you should absolutely check out GOG, and I'm sure there's a way to get the mods to work through that as well. Next up is a game I actually haven't heard of at all, Hero Siege, which was released in 2013. Unlike the other games on this list, it's technically a roguelike with hack and slash ARPG elements, and it has a very adorable indie pixel art style. I quite like the simplicity of pixel art for making things a lot more visible. ARPGs are often about the big epic battles, but one of the big problems with big epic battles is you can't quite see what's going on, especially when you're throwing skill effects and enemies are throwing skill effects and the screen just becomes a cluttered mess. So hopefully Hero Siege provides a little bit more clarity on this front. Also, unlike the other games on this list, Hero Siege is specifically made for co-op. So if you want an ARPG to jump into with some friends, I can definitely recommend this. Just from watching a little bit of gameplay, it reminds me quite a lot of Heroes of Hammerwatch, another game that I played and reviewed previously on this channel. Video in the card if you want to check it out. Unfortunately, the game's only at a 75% positive for reviews on Steam, with most of the negative ones citing the somewhat excessive DLC and some of the issues where the content is chopped up and portioned out. You're buying a DLC, but instead of it being a full expansion the way it would be with Titan Quest or the other game on this list, it's just a single character, and that feels pretty bad, especially for the price. So maybe avoid some of the DLC here, but overall, for $7 on Steam, it's also the cheapest game on this list, at least without any sales. And at 900 to 2,500 players active regularly, you're definitely not going to be playing this alone. So if you want to play something with some friends, definitely grab Hero Siege, as at least the base game does look like it has a good amount of content and should be quite fun. Now, I know a lot of people were expecting Diablo 2 to be the last game on the list, and it is probably the most popular old ARPG that people still play. However, I want to give the title here to another. And that's Grim Dawn. Grim Dawn is a much newer game, being released in 2016. And despite being a newer game, they've done a great job of making it feel like an old school ARPG. It's massively popular with 93% positive and 65,000 reviews. 
In fact, I played through the game before and had quite a lot of fun on my first playthrough. Unfortunately, the gameplay can be a bit janky. Sometimes the AI will glitch out, and sometimes pathing is not the best, but overall combat is very fun. You can even farm named enemies for their signature items. The character customization is split between picking your class, your subclass, and then all of your constellations. With constellations giving you a lot of additional bonus skills that are quite fun and definitely make for an immersive experience. And that's the thing that Grim Dawn really excels at, immersive, exploration-based gameplay. Unlike a lot of the other ARPGs, where you want to rush to the end of a level, or rush to a goal, Grim Dawn is much more about the journey than the destination. So if you want something to take your time and really go through on a first run, I'd absolutely recommend Grim Dawn. Plus, if you need a guide or a mod to help you out, it has tons of guides and tons of mods, though they aren't available through the Steam Workshop as far as I know. With a player base daily of 2,500 to 5,000 players, Grim Dawn has an absolutely massive community for an indie title, which is awesome to see. Furthermore, if you want something that's a little bit more like a modern live service seasonal ARPG, there is a community-led project through modding to make fan-made seasons, which is just a really awesome project, and if you're into that, I definitely suggest checking it out. Personally, I tend to prefer unmodded gameplay experiences, so I'll probably give it a pass, but that's just me. Grim Dawn is definitely an ARPG that you should play through at least once. And at $25 on Steam or GOG, you'll definitely get your money's worth. If you want to purchase the game while also supporting me, you can do so through my Nexus. This will give you a Steam key for the game, and a portion of your purchase will go directly to me. Link for that is down in the description. Next up, I want to talk about a few bonus games, things that didn't quite fit into the category for one reason or another, but still deserve the attention. Before I do though, a quick reminder that if you found this helpful, maybe you found a new game to play, do leave a like, and then let me know down in the comments which game you decided to play. If you want to see more Grim Dawn content, then stick around, get subscribed, as I'm going to be making a Should You Play Grim Dawn in 2022 video that'll release soon. Or feel free to check out any of the additional resources in the video card at the top right. Before I get back to things, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. More about how you can support at the end of a video. For now, let's talk about the classic ARPG, Diablo 2. Why didn't I mention it earlier? Well, because like PoE, I kind of assumed that everyone already knew about it, and that everyone who wanted to play it was already playing it. So instead, I wanted to highlight just how varied Diablo 2 can be as an experience, since everyone knows about vanilla Diablo 2. And most people probably know about Diablo 2 Resurrected, a game that as far as I know, faithfully recreated what the fans loved about the original. Though, while I have played Diablo 2, I have not played D2R. I have heard, though, that it does bring some more modern conveniences and runs a bit better on modern systems. On the other hand, if you want a PoE-flavored version, you could try the fan-made mod Path of Diablo 2. Or if you want something that feels a little bit more Diablo, I've heard very good things about Median XL, and I hopped into Project Diablo 2 and played for a bit. It was quite fun, and it's always awesome to see when fan-made projects add in new and unique content to make our favorite games even better. So if you're looking for a trip down memory lane while also trying something new, maybe check out a D2 mod. But then what about an MMO ARPG? In that case, I would suggest Lost Ark. And out of all the games I've talked about so far, this is the one with the largest active player base, at least based on publicly available numbers. Unfortunately, Lost Ark is a Korean-made MMO, which means it's going to be very grindy and by some definitions can be considered pay to win. Personally, I think it's towards the more mild end of a Korean pay-to-win game, but yes, there are definitely pay-to-win elements. It also plays a lot more like an MMO than a traditional ARPG. You have daily content, dungeons, raids, etc. And it's less about grinding up good items and more about taking on challenging bosses. That said, Lost Ark has an incredible class fantasy, more about that in the video in the card right now, along with very impactful ARPG-style gameplay. In fact, it's in Lost Ark's gameplay that it really stands out. Plus, because there are dungeons and raids, as I mentioned, a large player base is important, and Lost Ark's player base is quite massive. It's distributed among several servers, but there are 160 to around 220,000 players logging in concurrently, regularly, which means there's significantly more than that playing on a weekly or monthly basis. Unfortunately, Lost Ark is not available worldwide, but it is free to play and is available in North America along with most of Europe. Additionally, Lost Ark is a new game that's still getting new content, 
So if you want something to play that's going to change in a few months and aren't too into the modding scene, I could definitely recommend checking out Lost Ark and seeing if it's for you. Though based on personal experiences, I would recommend going into it with a friend rather than solo. On the other hand, what about a very story-based ARPG? For that, I'd recommend Children of Morta. It's a really cute looking indie ARPG roguelike hybrid. As you'll notice, there's quite a lot of overlap between the roguelike and ARPG genre, especially since both kind of boil down to players doing the same thing over and over again until we go insane. Don't worry, that's a joke, we lost our sanity long ago along with Zana. But unlike many of the other games on this list, which I'd say are heavily gameplay driven, Children of Morta is much more story driven. The only other title on this list that really feels story driven is in fact Grim Dawn. Plus, the simple and quirky pixel graphics remind me a lot of Hyper Light Drifter, a game that I absolutely enjoyed, and if you want to know more about that, check out the video in the card. Finally, after watching a bit of gameplay, Children of Morta has a heavy old-school dungeon crawler feel. So if you like things such as Legend of Zelda, and want to play them in a little bit more of ARPG form, it definitely looks like a game for you, and one that I'm probably going to pick up in a Steam sale at some point in the future. At 90% positive, it's definitely well-liked, and has hundreds of concurrent players regularly, which is really impressive for a small indie project. Now, the final game on this list is one that's not actually out yet, at least if you're watching this video when it first airs, but an upcoming title called Torchlight Infinite. The reason I'm excited for Torchlight Infinite is the gameplay feels really solid, and it's definitely heavily inspired by both Path of Exile and Diablo 2. In fact, not only is it inspired by Diablo 2, but David Brevik, one of the creators of Diablo 2 is working with the devs to improve Torchlight Infinite. I've played a lot of modern ARPGs, and out of all of them, Path of Exile by far has the best crafting and loot customization system. But from my experiences so far, Torchlight Infinite could have the second best I've experienced. It uses active and support skills so that you can really customize your build. The heroes and hero traits are broad archetypes such as being good with fire damage rather than limiting you to I'm a fire mage that casts fire spells, you could just go fire attacks if you want, or ditch the fire entirely and do some sort of wacky fire scaling lightning build. So far, I've played for over 100 hours during the beta, and I'm very excited to play the game once it releases. Thus far, my experience has been that it has excellent character customization and excellent loot driven gameplay. So if you like build based ARPGs, maybe keep an eye out because there's a good chance I'll be talking about Torchlight Infinite again in the future. But now, I only have one question for you. What's your favorite ARPG? Maybe it's a classic that you've played for decades, or maybe it's a really new game that you only found a couple months ago, but really fell in love with. I'd love to hear some of those thoughts down in the comments below. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your support helps keep me independent and allows me to turn down things like sketchy mobile game sponsorships. You can do so for as low as $1 a month over on Patreon, or if you want to support me completely for free, then you can join the community by hopping into my Discord, link below. If you want more content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts. It's a place that I use to review games, ramble my way through video essays, and a lot more. Or of course, you can just click the suggested video in the card right now. I hope you learned something today, and maybe I'll see you again sometime soon.